All right, welcome back to another episode of Stitch Method. Again, before we begin, make sure you share and subscribe. Let's get down to it. I have stolen two, well, I've stolen a lot of uh, guitar things, uh, but I've stolen two things uh, in guitar land uh, that I think you should steal when it comes to playing the blues. And I really think they're worth it, so let's just talk about how these two simple ideas can really enhance your blues playing. So, uh, we're going to start with the one that I stole last week. Uh, when you're playing the blues, it is very, very important that you understand what the blues is. And if you, if you don't know if this is your first Stitch Method video, please check out my blues primer playlist. A lot of it will make sense. But in short, excuse me, you can put a major pentatonic or a minor pentatonic on top of a regular chord or seventh chord and have it sound like the blues. You have two main soloing machines. When you play with a major pentatonic, you can call it a major blues. And when you play with a minor pentatonic, you can call it the blues. And they're interchangeable. I have several videos, um, this one right here, boom, uh, about mixing major and minor. And one thing that I stole was from John Mayer last week. I did a video about his, um, you know, his TikTok challenge, and I was dissecting some of his moves. And you realize it's never too late to keep on furthering how you think of guitar. And in one of the licks, I talk about how he uh, plays major, <laughs> really, he plays, he plays major, does this lick, this like kind of cool lick, and right there is what we're going to talk about. Then he does a little bit of this, and then a little bit of this. And I want to talk to you about how it changed my perspective and how you can always, always do something when you're playing a major pentatonic. I have an E backing track of an E7 uh, chord is being pulsed out. It sounds like this. Okay, over and over again. And on top of that, I can put a major pentatonic, and I'll show you what this trick is. And I can solo with my E major pentatonic. And the clutch here, and I have plenty of videos talking about soloing over major pentatonics, or with major pentatonics. This here is the root note. What's special is that the second note is the major second, right? And usually we find us bending up to the major third. And then, you know, we play, and then when, when we want to switch major minor, you, you, you sometimes, in my mind, it's like, okay, well, where, where's my minor pentatonic? And that would be a totally different shape. But what John Mayer did, it made me realize, like, how easy it is. Some of you might be like, oh my god, Stitch, you're an idiot, you know, how come you never saw it like this? I just never saw it like this. And now that I see it like this, it's important. The minor third is always three frets up, and I know that from your major third. Here's a root note, here's a minor third. This note is not in the major pentatonic, but it is the key note in a minor pentatonic. And a lot of John Mayer's licks start with major and end minor. And just that little minor third ending, just, I think I hit my, my camera stand, just that little minor third ending, that's all you need. is really a cool sound when you're playing major pentatonics and you want to get a little bit more bluesy without totally switching over to a minor pentatonic. So check this out. There it was. All right was twice, all right? Wherever you have a root note in the major pentatonic, yes, the minor third is always three frets up. I know it sounds so stupid and so obvious as I say it, but instead of switching out pentatonics, just end with a minor third tag. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, if we're playing any major pentatonic, how about this one? We're up in this like Albert King area, you know, or Freddie King box, or Albert King box, whatever you can call it, and you're soloing here. There it was there, all right? Instead of staying in the major box, well, there's a root note, and there's the minor third. Ending your major riffs with the minor third, bluesy as all, all right? It's just perfect. Now, that's one little idea that I stole from John Mayer, but it morphed into a second idea, all right? So maybe there's three ideas here. Uh, the idea is this. This is something that I just carried over uh, from the lesson so if you have any major pentatonic, wherever you have a root note, you can always do it a minor third tag. Let's just keep on this for one second. I forgot to mention, you know, you don't have to just play it. You can slide. You, know, you can do stuff like that. All 
right, there it was right there. We'll slide into it. Or, or... All right, the second thing, or part B, one part B, is uh, wherever you have your five in your major pentatonic, one, two, three, five. There it is there. Right? You can always come back to the four. Now, this is another thing that Mayer does, and I like this stuff. This is a cool sound. Five, wherever you are, major pentatonic, one, two, three, five. You can also end your riffs by going two frets back to the four, bending up with a little bit of this special sauce, that flat five, and then always next door to your four is a one. This is a four, this is a one. Well, if that's the case, then look, three frets up in your one. And you see it in that second riff of his TikTok line. And, and it, all this came from his second uh, riff. It's, just, it's a sick riff. So if you watch, you can play any pentatonic, major pentatonic. There's your root note. Instead of ending, you can end the minor third. Here's a root note here. Right? Here's a root note here. And that's an idea, but also, wherever you have a five, and you have a five, one, two, three, five, five here, you can always pull it back into the four, two frets back, a little special sauce, flat three, one. Let's look at it up here, all right? Here's one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, five. John Mayer does it in, in, that, in that lick, and it's a really inspirational lick. Five, two frets back, four. There's that bend, all right? Now this is the G, B string. So they're a little off, but flat three, one. G, B string, I mean, they're always off. So these little, like five, four, or like that, right? Kind of cool. And so I'll play a riff right here, and this really kind of, again, all of it came from that second lick of John's TikTok challenge. So here it is, I'm doing an E. He does an F, I'm doing an E. So look for all these riffs, I'll kind of explain them. Here we go, here's the major pentatonic. <laughs> Minor third ending. Again. Let's do the five four. All right. And so the pattern around this form one pentatonic. All right. We have this guy here. All right. Minor thirds. All right. With the fives. Or. Flat three, one, or five, four. Really good, really cool footprint. Ah. One day, just one day. All right, so that's the first thing I stole, that you want to end your major pentatonic riffs with a minor third. That's really cool stuff. And when I usually play the blues, I'm thinking about mixing and mixing and mix, mixing, but a simple just, here's major, and then fra, bam, what? Oh, that was minor third? Whoa, that was cool. That's a cool concept. The second guitar idea that I stole came from uh, my cello days, okay? Back in, um, let's see, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grades, I played cello. And um, I don't know how it came about from it exactly, but when you're playing with a bow, you can use your bow, of course, to mute your strings, a so bump, and you just put the bow on the strings. And I know that all of us kind of palm you, and if you like this part of the lesson, by the way, thank Jason. Jason and I had a lesson last night, and I was talking about this, I said, I gotta bring this one to the masses as well, so thank you, Jason. Um, instead of using a palm mute, what I do is any which way you hold your pick, this helps you get more snappy lead lines, we'll talk about that. When you listen to the Allman Brothers playing, if the Allman Brothers were playing this, this blues song, you'd hear a lot of flowing stuff, right? Like this, like. Right, a lot of linear lines. When you listen to a blues player or any guitar player that has like this blues bite to it, I'm not saying the, I'm not saying the Allman Brothers are not bluesy, but just that line. Um, you hear more snappiness. What do I mean by snappiness? I mean more definition, all right? More definition in the lines. And, and if you play like this, and this is gonna help a lot of people, because I have a lot of students that do this, where you go to play and you're getting this like. Like that. And we wanna get more definition. And what I mean by that is more pauses. And I'm not doing that with my palm. I'm doing it with my pick and my first finger. What I do, it acts like a little tiny, um, 
one of the little like felt pads of the pianos, okay? It's hard to show you, it is hard, but when I pluck, if I want the note to stop, instead of using my palm, I'm just gonna touch it with either my pick or my first finger. And it puts me on the string still where I can keep on playing. I'm on the G string. There it is again, G string, and then maybe D string. All right, and it's the first finger. It is literally the tip of the first finger and also maybe the pick right here. It sometimes slides in between, but using your first finger to stop your riff or stop your momentum. There it is. This helps you get more space in between your riff where instead of going like, you get, and you get more definition. You can hear a lot of blues players play this in these frequent like, you know, and believe it or not, I, I didn't go, I went, and that first finger you know, hit the string and deaden it. So using your first finger and your pick to deaden the string in the middle of your riff gives you, um, when I mean more definition is, I'll explain this to you. I don't know if this is true, but this is the analogy. I was told that when HD TVs came out, the reason they were more HD is because they were there was um, the pixels were able to have more black in them, which made everything more defined. And it wasn't about just the vibrancy of the colors. It was the fact you can see the like the different colors because they were separated by these fine, you know, super black lines that made everything like high definition. And so it's like the same thing here. If you do this. The, the riff is too smooth, but if you, like, you know, you can get more space in and the, the riff becomes more defined. So practicing, now these aren't palm mutes. These are pick, or pick and first finger mutes. Uh, help you, you know, play, like, right there, it's all right there. I'm not using my palm at all, like, end up on the string that you already plucked and you're ready to go again. All right, so, you know, stopping your riff or stopping your line, well, with, instead of your palm mute, which might get awkward with just a little tiny tap of your first finger, boom, and your pick. And I use this analogy here, I'm gonna lean over here, stay right here. Sorry, okay, so here is a little lens wipe, right? And so I have my pick, my first finger, and the string kind of goes whoop, right in between those sometimes. Sometimes it touches my first finger, sometimes I pick, but whoop, just like that. And, and what happens is you're already on the pick, ready to go again. And so I'm gonna toss that perfect landing, and it's just a great way to focus and give more definition. All that was the first, uh, the uh, index finger and pick. All right, so those are two and a half type things I've stolen over the years, which I think should help some guitar players, some blues players, just progress in their phrasing and their blues ideas. Uh, I thank you so much for uh, being here. Uh, if you want to practice this stuff with me on Patreon, of course, you know, my Patreon is very, very different what's out there. So if you want to like harden these skills, come see me or come check it out. I'll stop talking. Thank you again, rock and roll, bye-bye.